Okay, so thank you very much for being here with me today. I have an admission to make. Okay, so for the last 30 years, I have been a complete and utter stress bunny. And in that time, I've been working with people who are in exactly the same or worse conditions. Now, back when I was training and doing my A-levels, I remember Maslow's hierarchy of needs and looking at self-actualization and all about stress. And I went straight from that into nursing. Now, over time, I developed ME and cancer and recovered mostly from ME uh, and completely from cancer. But in that time, what I realised that was exactly my thoughts that was creating a lot of problems. And as I've been working with people, what I realised is none of us actually realise what's going on in our bodies. And I, my personal mission is to share that with as many parents and grandparents as possible to help the children particularly not be you know, in that sort of stressed and, and horrible, horrible atmosphere. And once again, not to develop um, the, the diseases and the discomforts that you get from stress. Now stress, a lot of people just think that it's an emotional thing. How I see stress is that it can affect you on a physical, or it does affect you on a physical nature first, before the emotional nature, believe it or not. So when we're stressed, we get tension, we get overload, we get pressure, we get strain, we get dysfunction. And what that does is it causes the body to age, degenerate, wear and tear, to buckle and lose strain, and, and to kind of driving at force on and on and on. Now, how it affects the emotions is actually the chemical part of stress. And when we're, when we're ooh, a bit frightened, the fight and flight goes up and then comes back down. And then it goes up and then comes back down. And that's the normal, the normal way through stress. But actually, whilst our fight and flight is coming up and down all the time, we've got another, another type of chemical called cortisol. And that's longer acting. So what's actually happening when we're stressed is something's going on. We get a rise in chemicals, some come back down, and others continue for a duration. Now the, the pressure on the body that that gives is that without knowing unwittingly there are things happening all the time to us and we don't even recognise what these symptoms are. And when you've got things going ongoing or difficulties or relationship problems or work problems or a problem with a family member or anything or all of those things or even health things, when that's going on, you've got these peaks and flows continuing and the continuation of the cortisol. Now, that, there are ways that when I look at whoever's in front of me as a, as, a, as a client or somebody to help, I can see exactly what stage they're in because I've put into a, a six, six sort of model that I work from. So the first one is when you're completely oblivious of the signs or in denial because, you know, quite often there's something going on in our body which we kind of, I'll just carry on because I haven't got time to go and get that looked at or fixed right now or it's just minor and it seems to go away, although does it? Because stress actually never goes away. If it's there, it's, it's carrying on those patterns. Now, what happens with the person is that they get to a point where all of a sudden they think, no, nope, there's a tipping point, I've had enough, there's a crash, I've got to get help. So they come off and they come and see me. I'm a human mechanic, by the way. So when they come and see me, I either give them a physical treatment or we chat through it and we actually look at what the problem is. I then suggest ways, help to correct it, suggest ways for long-term correction and recovery. And that's where it goes wrong. Because a lot of people will do the teeny, teeny stuff that they need to do to feel better. However, it kind of carries on going and carries on going. So what you tend to get is a, as a repeat and more and more of the same, or you get a little lull and then a repeat, more and more of the same. And emotionally, I call it same shit, different day, SSDD syndrome. So there are, there's kind of a physical thing, well, we know you get something, it gets worse, it gets worse, it gets worse until there's a real, real problem. Now the common denominator within all of this is actually thought. And most people never really recognize that is to how their thoughts are driving them to keep going and keep going and keep going. And you know, thoughts are powerful and I've come across so many people that have never considered or thought about it. And I always smile and I say, well, you know what? Have a little think a moment. 
Think about the first time or the second or third time that you met somebody you really, really cared for, that you fancied, that you loved, and you know that you can think about them and you know what changes in your body. Or think about a time when you had a really, really great, great day and something really stupid and made you laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. And when you try and explain it to somebody else, it doesn't seem funny, although for you, it still brings that little bit of a giggle. Now, thoughts do that and thoughts also accumulate and accumulate and they can drive you down. And it's really difficult, whether it's a physical thing or an emotional thing, how to actually get yourself back up going. Now, what I can tell you is that what I've devised over the last 30 years works. And what I can tell you is I've stood in front of people and helped them whilst I've been undergoing weeks of suicidal thoughts for up to eight, 10 hours a day. Quite normal, quite normal, without medication. So that's quite a thing to be able to do. And you know, when I talk to people who are really struggling to be able to tell them, hey, you know, this is me. This is what's going on for me right now, right now. But I'm okay. I'm keeping myself together. I'm keeping myself congruent and I can function. And they kind of go, wow, I'd really like to do that because I can't even get out of bed. I can't even do this. I can't even do that. And it's like, yeah, how can you just bring it all down? So it's recognizing, first of all, that thoughts create every single feeling in your body. They also create every single chemical change in your body. Now, we always hear lots and lots about the fight or flight, the adrenalines, and, and uh, we, we hear about the cortisol, but we hear very little about dopamine, which is also one of uh, the stress hormones. And you know what? It's our psychological immune system, just the same as we have a physiological, physiological immune system. What it does is when we're feeling, you know, that we can't cope, that we look at other people and we know that everyone's struggling, it makes us want to go and give them a hug or even just go and speak to somebody. Sometimes you can spot somebody and you just kind of like want to go and smile at them or say, hey, just, just kind of do that. And that raises the dopamine. And within us, when we get lots of fight and flight and cortisol going on, it's actually our driving force to say, you need help, you need to talk to somebody. And of course, when you're feeling down here, you don't want to do that. So it's, it's kind of a real funny thing, but once you understand how the system works, you can actually stop it. Okay, and you can raise your emotions up and get yourself onto a neutral path, regardless of what's going on in your head, regardless of what's going on in your life, and be able to really clearly consider what do I need to do next? Because all stress is, is a friend. It's a key to say to you, there's something going on in your life right now that you're not happy with. And it's as simple as that. Or there's someone in your life that keeps pressing your buttons or keeps doing things so religiously so often that actually it's bringing you down. And you know, I find it really funny that we don't run away. Fight and flight was made for us to run away, not stand there and kind of go, yeah, all right, go on, we'll fight for the next 20 years, shall we? Because actually health-wise, health it's no good for us. So it's really how do we get into this? How do we understand it? Well, you know, there's an awful lot to understand about thought, but what I do know is that every single morning when you wake up, if you wake up with a, a, an angry thought or a, you're annoyed with somebody and it's like this, or, you know, what you do is you think of those one or two people and you imagine them to be in the room with you and, and you tell them, I forgive you and ask you to forgive me. Now, you know what, I've done that and sometimes I think, well, I don't forgive you at all. <laughs> But when you keep telling yourself, I forgive you, you forgive me, it helps bring you back into a much softer place. Another great thing to do in the morning is ask, what can I do for you today? Do you know that is such a powerful thing to ask yourself because when you do, you'll get an answer. And the second you get that answer, do it. Don't ignore yourself, just do that thing. And sometimes I've woken up this morning and thought, what can I do for you today, Dawn? And I've had the answer, I'd like egg and bacon for breakfast. And I think, I haven't got time for egg and bacon for breakfast. I was like, oh. <laughs> but there are these things. And then something else to be really mindful of, to really help bring you up, bring you up emotionally, is think about things that you're grateful for. And I know a lot of people talk about gratitude. And you know what, when I first heard about it, I thought, well, what a little nonsense. How is that going to help? 
because I could think, well, I'm grateful for this, and I'm grateful for that, and I'm grateful for this, and I'm grateful for that, and I had this list that I was going through, but it wasn't until I really truly started to tuning in actually why I was grateful for that. And now I turn on the water and I kind of think, wow, that's incredible. I've got clean water coming out of the tap and I don't have to do any work for it, you know. So it's the very simplest things to bring you up. And when you're down here and you really can't find anything to be happy for, it's a proven fact. Science says, find three things every single day that were good. Now, you know, I've gone for weeks finding one one thing and even then I had to struggle it and was like I got a car park space the first time round you know and when you're down there and you're just raising yourself up a little bit really really helpful so what you have to remember is particularly with other people is that you can't give out what you don't have okay so if you've got some situation or some person that's really really getting to you if they aren't feeling love, peace, contentment, happiness, if they aren't feeling any of that, they certainly can't offer it to you. So even being in a relationship with that person or in a conversation with that person actually then makes it very difficult for you. Do you see? So the whole purpose really of today was to say this, that 30 years ago I came up with an idea and I tested it and I tested it on people who are well, I've tested it on people who are conscious, I've tested it on people who are unwell and unconscious for a length of 18 months time. I've tested it with children, I've tested it with cows, with dogs, with cats, or with humans, and it is always, always the same. Okay, so when I came to market and promote my great idea it was kind of like how can I do this and I was told that it cannot possibly be done because I cannot help every single person because there's nothing out there that can but the truth is between the first aid for stress marga therapy and the antidote for stress my three sort of things that I do I know that I can help each individual person not only am I one of the best massage therapists on a global level you might not know that I didn't realise, but apparently so. But not only that, I understand how the body works. And I'll tell you, if you know how it works, you can see these things brewing, whether it's a physical thing, whether it's an emotional thing, and you can deal with it. And the one lasting thing that I would like to suggest to you to go away and try is this. The biggest illusion in life is that somebody else is causing our stress. You know, it could be the weather, it could be, what's he called, Donald Trump, <laughs> or any of the politicians. It could be your mother, your father, your husband, your wife, your son, your daughter, your boss. It could be any of those things, but it never is. What it actually is, is it's your feeling about the scene that you're in right now, and your mood, and thinking about it, and applying it. So if you're feeling grumpy when you get up in the morning and somebody says something, you're likely to go, Wah! back. Whereas if you wake up in the morning and you're feeling great, they can say whatever you like and you'll laugh it off. Yeah, would you agree with that? So in each and every moment that you're starting to feel stress, ask what is creating this? Is it thought? Is it them or is it me? And what you'll find is each time that it's actually you and what's happening is your body is that you've seen something, you've had thoughts about it, you're now thinking about those thoughts, you've got the body reactions backing it up, you're looking around, everything seems absolutely as you're thinking but there's a problem. Because you get a thought, you think about it, you act about it, you're always acting in the past, you're never in the present moment. Do you see how that works? So all you do is you stop. Is think is thought creating this? And you know what? If it's really, really, really bad, think is something going to kill me right now? Is my life actually in danger? Because when you think that and bring it right back to roots, 
and know that those symptoms are being caused by the fight and flight, those symptoms are being caused by the, the cortisol, those symptoms are being caused by your lack of sleep because you're feeling a bit crabby, whatever. And then recognise the fact that actually everything around you is actually perfect and okay. And if it's not, run away. But if it is, calm down. Breathe, let it go. And just remember, be open-minded and judgment-free. Remember what the truth is and just start to see. And as you start to see, so you'll notice that things change. You will soften. And a couple of people, I had a group in here a month ago, and we spent two and a half hours and I gave a much, obviously much deeper than this. And they, they really kind of got it. And they went away and the feedback was quite remarkable. Something happened which they didn't expect. He said, Dawn, you changed my life in two and a half hours. He said, I listened to what you said and it was logical, it was sensible, it was kind of, I knew it was true, even though I'd never heard any of it, or some of it, or certainly not put together in that way. He said, and every time I found myself in a situation that was difficult, I considered what you said and I saw it every single time. And he said, and by me recognising that it was thought and keeping my emotion in a correct alignment and in a good place meant that there was like this ripple effect and everybody settled down much easier, difficult, slightly I don't know, aggressive even situations just dispersed and everything went along quite nicely, quite easily and actually turned around to the way that he wanted it in the first place. He needed to solve something, they were able to solve something. And the thing is, for all of us, whether we're parents, whether we're, you know, work colleagues, whatever, whatever role, even children, our emotions are in our control and when we go in, in control of them, we can go into any situation in peace and the outcome will always, always, always be much nicer.